Like the last thing I want to do is do the whole. I don't even remember how to do this. <laughs> or just, like, just pretend like nothing happened. That's <laughs> actually my dream. My dream is to just like record just a video. Episode. We'll just rec- we'll just record a video. Like we'll just do it. <laughs> just don't acknowledge it. We're back. <laughs> I am super excited about this series. So excited, in fact, and you know this already, but I'll tell this to the viewership that when I saw this cereal in the store, I immediately contacted Dylan and I brought it to his house the same day (laughs) to drop it off and get it out of my sight because I, one, didn't want to eat the cereal ahead of time. And two, I did not want to be like reading the box or looking at the art or anything ahead of time because I wanted to give y'all... The natural, true blind experience. Taking it, yeah, I want to blind eat through. Uh, this is the cereal we're reviewing today. Look at this, y'all. We are doing okay. It says Ghostbusters Afterlife, which I did not read in the read in the mm-hmm. story. So this is probably the official cereal for the new movie, the new second reboot, the new second reboot. Oh, it's already started. Uh, it's a good box. It is a good looking box. I do really. I'm a big fan of black and red, yeah. black, white, and red. So that. Ghostbusters symbols and marketing and trademark has always been really clean. It's worked. It's worked for you. It's worked. As a matter of fact, I have. Did I ever show you my Ghostbusters tattoo? Dude, I think you can see that. I know you have thoughts on Ghostbusters. (laughs) Oh, I have plenty of thoughts on Ghostbusters. So, I I don't know if we put this here, but a rant is going to happen. Let me just give you all the heads up now. A rant is coming. A serial adjacent rant. I will focus on the serial as much as possible. But when I saw this in the store, I really didn't even think the new movie right away. Because it, okay, so I remember the new Ghostbusters Afterlife movie being kind of advertised. This movie is kind of starting to peek back around. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. So I saw this in the store, didn't even think about the movie itself because, I mean, good for them. I actually kind of like. I think that's a good decision. Yeah. Minimize the Afterlife part. Yes. It does Ghostbusters cereal. And that's what I saw. I was like, Ghostbusters cereal has got to stay puffed on there. Now, I think they are in the new movie, but that aside, I like that the, the fact that the whole new movie selling of this is very minimal. Really quick, I am a huge, huge fan of the Ghostbusters franchise. I don't want to say Ghostbusters or, or the Ghost Ghostbusters busting. movie or busting. <laughs> like, I don't want to say any of those things. I'm a huge fan of the franchise. As a kid, the Ghostbusters first movie was really big for me. Ghostbusters 2 was huge for me. I watched the Ghostbusters cartoon and the real Ghostbusters cartoon. I watched the one with the monkey and the one with the guys. So I watched them both. So I was big into Ghostbusters. And you know what? Here, rant starts. Here we go. Fuck it. We're here. I like to do this thing now where it's like I take old things that I remember being really great and I try to reevaluate them and see, are they really still great or if it's, or if it's just nostalgia? The original Ninja Turtles cartoon Period. is bad. Like, it's actually bad. I love the Ninja Turtles with all my heart. And there is good Ninja Turtles media, but that original cartoon is bad. And I'm embarrassed that I liked it as a child. I miss doing this shit. <laughs> the original Ninja Turtles, I'm sorry, y'all. Anybody that loves Ninja Turtles is watching this, and I'm sure somebody watching this loves Ninja Turtles. But the show was trash, bro. Like, the, <laughs> if you just take it for what it is, remove it from everything you love, yep. it's that and X Men is trash. I like to do that with things that I think I love, and I try to see if I still love it or if it's if it's just mainly nostalgia. Yep. Ghostbusters one and two are still great films. Yes. They still hold up. Yes. And I was trying to figure out, like, well, why? Why do I still think this is a good movie? Aside from, like, I have a little bit of proof because my daughter, at five years old, also loves the Ghostbusters movie. Like, she watches it, and there ain't too much life action stuff that she even cares about. Right. Like, if it's not animated. Yeah. But she likes Ghostbusters. It does a good job of kind of, like, writing the whole... Is this a comedy? Is this a horror film? Is this serious? Are they joking with us? Uh, Are the scary scenes genuinely scary? And I also think that this is not just a case of the firsties, right? Like, Uh I don't think that it's good just because it was the first time a movie had correctly rolled that wave of this is serious and this is a joke. 
Side note, another movie that's kind of like that is, for me, is Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Yes. I'm a huge Pee-wee fan, and I'm always reevaluating, like, do I really, is this movie good, <laughs> or do I just think it's good because I love Pee-wee and I grew up loving Pee-wee, but it's actually good. Cereal, though. Back to the cereal. So, there's one thing about this that makes me concerned. I want to say it before I open the okay. box, okay? This is what I'm concerned about. The puffs of cereal partner with the marshmallows, okay? That is a lazy way out for cereal these days. And I've noticed it. Like, I'm on to y'all, big cereal. It's lazy to me. Now, for all I know, they could be in the factory sweating over machines trying to press these marshmallows, <laughs> but I don't think they are. I just don't feel like well, they it's, are. It's it's creatively lazy is the problem, right? Because mm. like in the past, they're like, let's make a property based cereal and let's make a brand. Let's try something new instead of like, let's just know, do something we know will sell. My biggest problem with this is because I came up as a cereal guy in an era where they did this, but they did other things as well. Like, if you look back, I think there was a Ninja Turtle cereal that was marshmallows, yeah. but it was coupled with, like, check squares, almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they did other things. I think Batman did something like that with a cereal once. Like, when the original Batman movie, Tim oh, Burton Again, came out. That, yeah. yeah, so it's just like, y'all don't have to do this every time. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like, you know what? <laughs> See, this is where I love doing cereal. <laughs> if they would have gave me... Frosted Flakes of Corn. Notice I didn't say Frosted Flakes. If they would have given, given me Frosted Flakes of Corn, tinted slightly green with sugar, I would have liked that better. I mean, it's green on the bowl. Okay. But I, I, I appreciate them giving us some yeah. hue of green because it's important when you're yeah. talking right. Ghostbusters, even if Slimer isn't present. Right. Right. But I feel like if they would have just gave me like flakes, tinted green, sugar on them, I would have loved that. But I love Frosted Flakes. So I guess you got to throw pressed marshmallows in there. So if you put pressed marshmallows with green flakes, I would have liked that more, I think. Have they done flakes and marshmallows? Is that a, is that a well, Taco Bell combination? Kellogg's is doing it right now because okay. Frosted Flakes has a flakes with marshmallows happening. Okay. Even if they would have did rice puffs. I don't know. I just feel like because these are just balls. Let me see what they're saying. It says fruity flavored sweetened corn puffs. With marshmallows. Has that ever happened where you've had the cereal and it's a tie-in cereal and it's just identical to another product that they just they just slapped a different box on it? You like, know what? To be fair, no. That's insane. Like, to be fair, and I would love to tell you yes. I'm kind of because sure. it would just further support my point, but actually no. Like a lot of times when the Trolls movie came out, they had a fruity sweetened cereal with marshmallows. Mm -hmm. And it was a very bright flavor, and it was like really close to the rainbow bright that I bring up on this channel all the time, but it was very bright. And then that didn't taste like frozen and that doesn't taste like uh toy story. Yeah. Let's open the box, right? It's time to open the box. I'm excited to open this because like, I love Ghostbusters <laughs> and I want this to be great. I want this to be great. Oh. Hmm. That's an interesting smell. It's not a bad smell. It smells like something I've had before in the mid 80s, which is a good thing. Interesting. Now, I could be wrong about this, but it's giving me Nintendo Power. Oh my God. That's one of the, like the half holy grails, right? Yo, <laughs> I almost said the N word. You remember, <laughs> you this remember is not... the smell of Nintendo Power cereal? I'm scared. <laughs> I almost cussed again. I don't know why I do. But this smells like Nintendo Power. I hope it tastes like it in any capacity. But for those of y'all that don't know, uh, Nintendo Power came out with a cereal back in the 80s, probably late 80s, early 90s, around the time when Nintendo, the first NES came out. And it was a split pack. There was uh, Zelda cereal on one side and Super Mario cereal on the other side. There was basically just puffs of sweetened corn or rice. And just Zelda had like more green and yellow colors, I think, and Mario had like more red. There's a hint of fruity, which I like. Like, I don't really, when I open a new box, I don't want to go, Whoop! like, because um, I feel like later that's going to translate to a stomach ache yeah. and it's just an overpowering taste. Yeah. Like, I like to taste some fruity flavor in my fruity cereals and be able to eat several bowls. If it's too overpowering, I'm going to have one bowl, sit on top of the fridge. I'm going to say that was good. Yeah. 
I can't wait to eat some more, and then I'm not going to eat it. We got to calibrate your smell test here. That you have you have opened the box and been grossed out immediately. Yeah, that hasn't happened, so we're already. In we're a, already okay. Doing okay. We're it's, okay. It's not a guarantee it's going to be good. Can I tell you, like the puffs themselves, like how they look like senior citizens, <laughs> <laughs> like the wrinkledness of them. Have you seen a puff that has that texture to it? That's. I want to say kicks, but not that wrinkly. So I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try one of the uh, puffs, the the senior citizen strawberries first. Oh, I like that. That's kicks. It's it's, strawberry. it's it's strawberry kicks. Literally strawberry. Kicks. Okay, it's mild. I, I love that you called that it, it was kicks based on the texture. <laughs> oh God! Sometimes, like I, I know some people watch this channel for me actually reviewing cereal, <laughs> but let me just tell you, I want to be honest. It's embarrassing to have this much knowledge over something that matters so little. I remember when Berry Berry Kicks came out. And it was like the whole, there's new berry, berry flavor with these berry, berry kicks. And I was excited because I didn't even eat kicks until berry, berry kicks came out. Mm. I didn't care about it. Like kicks to me was always like, you're poor yep. and you got these on Wix cereal. Wix cereals is something that you had to eat. It wasn't something you chose. But berry, berry kicks wasn't a Wix cereal right. and it had actual flavor. It didn't taste like the Great Depression. <laughs> so I was excited to eat berry, berry kicks. How do you feel about these? Like, could you see yourself eating these in a baggie? Yeah, yeah. So they're baggy would, approved. Pass the baggy test for sure. Baggy approved. All right, I'm gonna eat some. I don't know why I want to eat the marshmallow solo, like because a marshmallow is a marshmallow is a marshmallow. Right. Every day of the week, it's a marshmallow. It's yeah, cereal marshmallow. I don't think I've ever had like, whoa, that marshmallow different. I'm excited that the pups are something different. So props to y'all on that. Sorry, General Mills, I prejudged you. Here's one thing I want to talk to you specifically yes. about, about Ghostbusters. <laughs> How am I going to put this? There's a thing in Ghostbusters that I want to discuss with you, right? Yep. And it's about casting. Yep. Ghostbusters stars Peter Venkman. Yep. Uh, Egon. Dan Aykroyd. Ray Stance, yeah. <laughs> and the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, before you freak out, I know his name is Ernie Hudson. I know the black guy's name is Ernie Hudson. Uh -huh. But I only know that as an adult. <laughs> when Ghostbusters came out, I didn't know his character name or his real actor name. Uh -huh. And I didn't care. <laughs> and I don't think Ghostbusters intended us to care. Like, if you even just look at how the black Ghostbusters showed up to the crew. It was really on some, I'm just here for a check. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's talk about this. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's critical to the comedy. Like, yes. Like it's the, like, this is just their job. They're like, they're like plumbers who happen to be saving the world. I've always felt like Dan Aykroyd, Peter Vankman. I never felt like any of them didn't respect Ernie Hudson. Uh-huh. I never ever yeah, felt like that. that. He's just, he's a member of the team. Even as a kid, like even as a kid, I never felt like the rest of the Ghostbusters devalued Ernie Hudson uh -huh. in any way. Ernie just was here for a check. But I also feel like in the 80s, <laughs> I want to be careful saying this. I never felt like Peter Venkman was doing this. I never felt like Egon was doing this. I never felt like Dan Aykroyd was doing it's this. I felt like it was movie. just the culture of the, the moment. The culture of the 80s is that this makes sense to do, and it's going to be, no one's going to be mad about it, right? <laughs> I've made the point in, in less comedic conversations where, like, I always make the point where if you were white in the 70s yeah. and you rode the bus, you just sat in the front because that's what was expected. Like, that's what you did. Culturally, you sat in the front. I'm sure every person that sat in the front of the bus didn't hate black people. Right. They just knew culturally you sit in the front. They didn't just sitting in the front wasn't an admission that I hate people of color. Right. I don't think... It was so burned into the fabric of reality that it... They, that's what made it so insidious is that people didn't even think about it. Right. Even, I'm thinking I'm sitting in the front of the bus and who's not sitting in the front of the bus. It just never even. And, it never even dawned in my mind. And I think, I think Ghostbusters as a film, when you look at it in this mm -hmm. light is a beautiful example of that. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And I mean that respectfully. Like yeah. I, I'm not being tongue in cheek. Like I think it's a beautiful example of a time capsule that I think it's I think it's layered so well that this movie will never be canceled for it mm-hmm. because it's not apparent. Mm-hmm. It's never brought to the forefront. Right. But if you pay attention, it's just kind of like Ernie Hudson is the fourth Ghostbuster. <laughs> He's a bit of an afterthought. But that's kind of the joke, and everybody loves the joke. Yep. Ernie don't seem like he minds. Nobody f- feels like they're disrespecting him, but it just kind of, I think it encapsulates the feeling of that moment. That's a good point. Well, we'll see how much of this stays in. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is Ghostbusters lightning in a bottle, but it's it's kind of an accident that it works so well. Like yeah. Winston is the most important character of the movie because he, he is what the Ghostbusters are about. Like, it's about the fact that they're schlubby exterminators yeah. trying to get a check. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that um, Venkman wants them to get into business for themselves. They put uh, another mortgage on Ray's house, right? Like that's the movie. Yeah. And and Winston is like the purest. Dis- He's dis- the dis- purest dis- form. You know what? And uh, th- this might be a deep dive, but a lot of people that are big fans of the Migos say Takeoff is the purest Migo. Uh, <laughs> Quavo is Beyonce of the group. Offset is Bobby Brown. They're both bigger stars than Takeoff. But when it comes to the purest form of rapping in the Migos' style, nobody does it better than Takeoff. The essence of what they are is the least popular member. We can keep that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think yeah, we did okay. Say. Okay. Now for the poor. Are y'all ready for the poor? Oh, I miss it. Give y'all that uh, up close. Still looking good. Yeah, I wonder why they they filtered out the pink on the box. Maybe it just clashed with the black. Yeah, and then they made them. They made them look almost yellow on the box. Yeah, and they made them smooth, like real smooth. They're not wrinkled. I wonder if like somebody at Big Cereal was like, if you show the actual pieces, it'll be unappetizing. Like smooth those, round those out. (laughs) Because they're obviously animated. Like Uh they're animated versions of the actual cereal. Like... These aren't super unappetizing. They look a little crangish. Yeah. Is there been Ninja Turtles cereal? Anyway. There have been several. Okay, okay. <laughs> of course you know that. There have been several. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pat this down. Friends don't let friends eat overly dry cereal. Patented, uh, the patented cat pat, yeah. right? Gotta pat it down. Gotta pat it down. Hmm. So, in milk... The kicks flavor kind of fades away and it kind of becomes a little bit something else. Interesting. And I'm okay with what what it has turned into. Does that happen to kicks? Nah, kicks kind of it turns into something else, but it's still the thing it turns into is still kicks. Okay. Uh, this thing turned into licensed cereal dots. Like once I poured the milk on it, it now it tastes like frozen or any other thing. The milk is actually making it more generic. Yeah, it was. I don't know how that happened. I don't know if that's ever happened. Now, this is not bad. Okay, it's a decent cereal. Would I get another box? No. Really? Okay. Yeah. I would not get another box, but I don't know if we've done this before. Is if this is a first, you can probably tell me. But this is better dry. I think that's a first. I think that's an actual first. Yeah. Hmm. This is better dry. Like, we we've had ones where we say this is this is particularly good as a bagging cereal, but mm-hmm. I also love it in milk because milk has never detracted from the experience. Right, that's that's incredible. Not as good in milk. Not as good. Um. Overall, I mean, I guess. Damn, I, I honestly can't say I would recommend it. Wow, would you recommend it as a snack cereal, as a novelty? To, I mean. I would recommend you, if you love the Ghostbusters, buy a box and set it on your shelf. <laughs> like, if you're a YouTuber or a streamer, buy a box, set it in the background. Because the box is dope. Like, the box looks really good. Yeah. But <sighs> I can't recommend this cereal. That's... I can't recommend this cereal. It's, okay. it's boring. It's boring. It's boring. It's, I think it's, it's boring because the box is so good too. Like, oh yeah, the box. Yeah, the box did have me hype. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> One more Ghostbusters rant before we <laughs> get out of here. We got to talk about the Ghostbusters music. Yep. Yep. Ray Parker Jr. Right. Mm-hmm. So we got to give Ghostbusters his props. Like we got to make sure we do this. Yes. The Ghostbusters theme 
is incredible. Yes. Incredible. Like it's up there with all movie soundtrack themes. Any any theme that you can hum, like Star Wars, any it, up there with John that. Williams, yeah. It, it deserves the same respect as any movie theme music you can think of, right? Um let's say just off of recent current events, the Mortal Kombat music, right? Yep. The original Mortal Kombat theme to the original Mortal Kombat movie, everybody loves. You can't redo it. You can't duplicate it. You can't update it. You can't do it again. Yep. I actually kind of appreciate the new Mortal Kombat movie for not trying. Yep. They just was like, <laughs> y'all not going to get us on that. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostbusters 2 didn't necessarily just bring back Ray Parker Jr.'s song. They enlisted, at the time, the biggest name in pop music, Bobby Brown, to do their theme music. Risky, right? Risky. For all reasons that should not have worked. Even just outside the fact that Bobby Brown was high when he wrote it. <laughs> this is not me guessing. He admitted it. In the Ghostbusters theme, Ghostbusters 2 theme music by Bobby Brown, uh-huh. it's also amazing. There's no deep dive here. If nothing else, I want to make sure that Ghostbusters gets his props for having a classic theme song. Yep. Taking a risk and putting a new theme song in and still knocking it out of the park. You didn't want to talk about Afterlife? <laughs> I mean, we can for a minute, man. Uh, okay. So, Ghostbusters Afterlife is the second reboot, the second reboot. of the franchise, yeah. right? Do we need Stranger Things again? Because we already did it with it. It does. American culture loves Ghostbusters no matter what. Yep. Uh, they can continue to give us bad movies and we will still love that logo. We'll still buy products with that on there. As a matter of fact, they re-released the original early 90s toys, the oh, figurines. Nice. Same packaging and everything. And it took everything in my fiber not to buy them. <laughs> everything in my fiber because, like, I started to buy them, but I was like, what am I going to do with some toys? Dude, what are you going like, to do you put? <laughs> action figures, don't get me wrong. Like, I got some Rick and Morty's at the house. Uh-huh. But it's just like, if I keep buying figurines just because I love the property, where I'm gonna put them? Like I don't really have space in my you, creative. You, for you just need to write a check to Ghostbusters, man. That's all you really want to do. You just want to write. I do want to just. You want to put some money, some money in there. I want to give some walking around money. money. I do because I appreciate what they've done for me. Uh, thank y'all for watching uh, Cat and Crunch again. I'm not gonna promise y'all another video because we don't know. We'll get it. We'll, I guess I say what I've been doing since we haven't been here. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I know I said I would never promote the podcast here, but I feel like we have like mellowed out enough. <laughs> I'm, we have mellowed out enough to where I can tell y'all about the show. Uh, it's called the Dipped in Butter Program. It's wherever podcasts are found, uh, podcast, Apple Podcasts, App, Spotify, whatever. But uh, it's just me and a friend of mine talking about whatever comes to mind. I kind of like this, but we don't start with Siri. But uh, if y'all ever want to check it out, by all means, you're free to check it out. This has been fun. Um, I guess we'll put the rest of the credits, like where Jaden's music is found and where your Twitch is found. I don't remember how the fuck we do this, dude. What what have we not said? Well, let me think. Uh, How do we bring it back? So... Uh, just running down the list very quickly, how would you, out of 20, how would you grade the texture? Out of 20, I would give it a four. Wow. Um, not that it's like, it feels slimy or gross or bad or anything. It's just that it's, it's, it's unimpressive. Yep. It's really uninspired. They're just puffs. And don't get me wrong. You can do a lot of things with puffs. Like we talked about kicks. Kix has a very specific puff where it's like, it is a corn puff, but it, like when you chew it, you can kind of feel the air escaping it. And yeah. I've always loved that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just, it's a boring puff. I'll That's give it fair. a four. What about a consistency out of five? Broken pieces, uniformity, just from what you saw in the box earlier? Like Out of five, five out of five. Okay. Perfect That's... on consistency. Like there are no half circles in here. There are no ghost marshmallows with their heads chopped off. Like. They did a good job what with quality was, control. You had a term for bad pieces. Bobo pieces. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> have to get back. We're getting back. we getting back. <laughs> no bobo pieces in here. Now, you, you talked about the milk, but out of 20, it sounds like it has to be like a zero, which is 
unprecedented. Not because it's so terrible, because the milk actually makes it worse and it has never happened before. This has been sitting in milk for a good, like, 10 minutes now, and this it is awful. Okay. But I won't give it a zero. I'll give it a one because there is a step lower than this. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've experienced... I've experienced some cereals where you pour the milk on and it's like you got to eat it so fast before the milk sets in that oh. it's just, it's not even a pleasurable experience at any point because you're racing against the milk. Um, honestly, original Rice Krispies might be close to really bad, like close really? to the zero when it comes to wow. milk pairing. Wow. Not frosted Rice Krispies. Those are delicious. But original Rice Krispies? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the coating. Maybe the coating on the Krispies helps it. It's buoyancy. Um, Synergy. How would it play with other breakfast foods? Not very well. Okay, Not very 10. well. Um, I actually started to, like, I would normally stop by, like, McDonald's yeah. and grab, like, a sausage biscuit or something mm -hmm. salty to pair with a sugary cereal just to cleanse the palate, and I didn't do that. And just imagining if I had a breakfast biscuit right here, I would exclusively focus on the biscuit. Sure. Synergy, <laughs> not great. What is that out of? That's out of 10. Out of 10, Synergy, three. Because I could do it. I could get through it. I could power through it if I had to. But it's, it's I wouldn't advise. <laughs> That's fair. And then versatility was how many situations can you eat it in? Is it an everyday cereal? Is it a baggy cereal? It's not an everyday cereal, as you've said. right? And what is that out of 10? That's out of 10. That's a one out of 10. This cereal can only be consumed sitting crisscross applesauce on the living room floor watching the Ghostbusters. Cartoon only. <laughs> you can't watch the movie. Cartoon only crisscross applesauce living room floor. Too specific of a circumstance to give it a high grade on that. All right. And the very last one is the most important. Out of 30 points, how does the cereal taste? Out of 30, see, out of milk, it was all right. Yeah, I guess you have to give it, consider it both out of milk. Yeah, I have milk. to consider both in and out of milk because as a baggy cereal, it's all right. As an in-milk cereal, it's kind of meh. So out of 30, it's not high enough to bring up the bad side. So it's going to be under 15. Okay. Because I, f I feel like if it was one of the greatest out of the out of the milk cereals of all time, and then it's horrible out of the bag is going to meet somewhere in the middle at 15 to me but it's neither so it's below and it weighs heavily on the bad than it does the good sure so i'm gonna give it an eight out of 30 okay all right yeah this is i'm still good at this <laughs> see, see this is why i want to do the score part i know like yeah. I, I don't know whether it made it into the video but we were talking about like isn't that a thing that we reserve for the full one hour review mm -hmm. this is hot takes but it's like but hearing your <laughs> Here you make sense of this now. Yeah, it's, it's that's what we're here for, right? That, that's what this is all about. That's why this we came. Science. And then I guess we already talked about marketing, but I think you would say five for marketing out of five? Five out of five. Five out of five. five, out of five. five, out of five. Yeah. Highest score. Like I said, that I, if, if you can find this on sale for like two or three bucks, buy it, dump the bag in the trash, tape the box up, and sit it on your shelf. Because this box is fire. Like they killed this box. Uh, but it's the best part of the experience. <laughs> <laughs>